Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Capturing extreme detail across a macro subject usually means some form of focus stacking. But there is another way. This image was captured completely in camera with no focus stacking. This was achieved by manipulating the plane of focus. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is what I've got set up so far. This is my subject. And I've picked this sort of subject on purpose because it has a relatively flat plane. And basically, I've just put it in this tray so I can add some interest a little later on. You'll see what I mean. OK, so the next thing to do would be to pick the camera position. Now the whole point of this video is to show how you can capture a subject like this and keep the whole of the subject in focus without focus stacking at all. So what I'm going to do is place a tripod at the front here. There we are. Now I've placed it this close on purpose so that I can put my camera on here and be looking down at an angle at the subject. So for the camera, I'm initially going to be using this medium format camera. This has a 120mm macro lens on the front of it. So in full format terms, you'll get a similar field of view out of something like a 70mm lens. OK, so let's just pop this on the top of the tripod like that. And I'll turn it on. Now the camera is tethered into Capture One software so it's easy to follow along and see the results as I get them. So let's have a look at the settings that I've got on the camera at the moment. It's in full manual mode. I've got a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera. ISO 100. And at the moment, I've got an aperture set of f4. Now that is wide open for this particular lens. So the next thing I'm going to do is just set up the shot. And I'm going to use one of the features within the software here, which is Live View. So I'll just start that up. There we are. And you can see I'm getting a live picture on the screen here of everything that the camera can see. So what I need to do is point the camera down at the table so I can use the geared head on the tripod here just to do that. I can check in the monitor when my subject's in the centre of the screen. There we are. And now I'll just rotate the lens until the whole thing's in focus. There we are. I can now dispense with live view. And with these settings, but with no flash set yet, I'll just grab an image just to make sure I don't get any contamination from the house lights. And as you can probably see at these settings, I am getting some contamination. But there again, I have an aperture set of f4, which is going to give an extremely shallow depth of field. So I'm not likely to use that. So let's change the aperture to something more reasonable. So I'll change it to f8, and we'll grab that again. There we are. We've got a bit of a ghost of an image, but nothing too serious. So now any light which I add will be the only light which affects the subject. OK, so to light this, what I'm going to do is just place a softbox at the top here. There we are. So I've placed this two foot by two foot softbox in approximately the right position. And just at an arbitrary energy level, I'll grab an image and we'll see what we get. And there we are, you can see straight away that that's way overexposed. I think it's probably a couple of stops over. I'll take two stops of energy out of the flash and we'll try again. OK, so at the moment it's on number five. So I'll take that down to number three. There we go. There, that's a bit better. So in terms of exposure, that's not too bad at all. But I don't really like this reflection that I've got in the background here. What's actually happening is I'm getting a reflection of the surface of this softbox in the black tray. And that is degrading the black background to more of a grey. 
So in order to make that black again, what I'm going to do is just move this light a little further over this way. There we are. OK, so with that new position, what I'll do now, grab another image and see what it looks like. Yes, that's much better. That's much more like the sort of thing I want. So the background has now gone nice and black. But you can clearly see in this image that we have a band of focus, especially if I zoom in a bit. Yes, you can see on the edge here, this is the part which is actually in focus. But by the time you get down to the front here, it's way out of focus. And the back is equally way out of focus. So I could use a larger aperture, smaller hole, to give me a greater depth of field. So let's just try that. And let's go from f8 to f22. So that's a three-stop change. So I need to add three stops of energy to the flash. So I'll take that from three all the way up to six. There we are. And so with that change made, I'll grab that again. OK, so it has made a difference. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now, but it's still not quite right. Again, if I just zoom in at the back here, it's still out of focus, in focus in the middle, and out of focus again at the bottom. So this is the time when you might want to resort to focus stacking. But there is another way. And what I can actually do is change the plane of focus. As it is at the moment, with a camera such as this, the plane of focus is actually parallel to the plane of image, or the sensor plane. So what I'm going to do is swap this out for something where I've got a bit more control over the plane of focus. There we are. So what I've done is swapped it out for this 5 by 4 inch Cinar technical camera. Now it might look a little daunting, but really it's very simple. So at the front here I have a lens on a lens plane, and at the back I have a image plane or sensor plane, and I've basically just taken the back off my other camera and placed it on the back of this camera. So that will be the image capture device. So I can set the camera up. I'll just put f22 as the aperture on the lens. The lens is all ready to go. So I'll just grab an image just with everything straight so we can compare the two images. They should be almost the same. OK. Yes, there we go. So this is with the large format camera. And this is the result that I got with the previous camera. And you can see that they are more or less the same. So it's out of focus at the bottom here, and it's out of focus at the top, but it's in focus in the zone in the middle. OK, so that's with a parallel plane of focus. So the plane of focus is running at this sort of angle through here. But with this type of camera, you can change that. So what I can do is manipulate the front plane here to change the plane of focus. So as I turn this, I'm moving the plane of focus on the subject. There we are. So now you should be able to see that the subject plane and the lens plane and the sensor plane all converge in one point. And that's basically the principle of how this works. So if I've got all this right, I've now changed the plane of focus from this sort of angle to this sort of angle. OK, so let's just grab an image and see what happens. OK, so that's instantly cleaned up the image quite considerably. If we have a look at what we had before, and I zoom into this area at the bottom, you can see it's all a bit out of focus. And now on this one, you can see that it's 
sharply in focus. And the same applies to the top. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. OK, so we're nearly there. So just to do that little bit of extra that I mentioned at the very beginning, just to add a bit more interest to the background, I'm just going to add some sparkling water to the tray. There we go. So with that in place, we'll give it another go and grab another image. Yeah, I think it's starting to get there. Just going to add a little bit more water, just to bring the level up a bit. Yes, that's the sort of thing I want. So that's added a bit more detail. Very good. OK, so for actually capturing the image, that's it. So just by moving the lens plane, I've changed the focus plane to be parallel to the subject. And that means I don't need any focus stacking to get the whole thing in focus from front to back. So there we have it. By using lens tilt, I've been able to change the plane of focus to match the subject. This technique isn't anything new. This has been around since the invention of photography. But it does mean you don't need any focus stacking. And I think that image has worked out rather well. OK, well, I hope you like watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.